So our class today is going to talk about a program called Layout. We will be using Layout to create a working drawing set of a kitchen design. This is the program that you should use to create your two-dimensional drawings in class. A lot of students I've had in the past say, oh, I just import my SketchUp model into Revit and then add notes, or vice versa. I did my model in Revit and I imported it now into SketchUp. Stay in SketchUp, stay in Revit, or stay in AutoCAD, or stay in whatever program you're at, and use the program tools there. The best process is to import into Layout from SketchUp and use the tools in Layout to notate a drawing. Importing into layout from SketchUp is basically taking a 3D model and putting it onto a 2D space and noting it up. So and all those kind of notes that we need to make a drawing understandable should be done in layout. Let's take a look at some examples and how different layout can look depending on the firm. So this model is in SketchUp and, uh, and this photograph is probably a JPEG. Um, and then they're just showing the client what it's going to look like in its space. So here's what it looks like. Originally, they're going to doctor up their, their front to make it look nice. And this is what it looks like in 3D. So this is, how they, this is how this person did it. Another example. So this is a SketchUp model, 3D model that is like a 2D picture. Uh, the front view, the side view, and so forth. Here's a little perspective view of the whole project and how it's going to look. Uh, and these are some floor plans. These floor plans are of this project. In other words, it's still a SketchUp. We're going to make our SketchUp model look like this. I'll show you how. Another example from another person. This one here. I can see this sheet being an interior design project, right? Because you're looking down on the space here for plan view. And then you can show some interior scenes and talk about it, right? Uh, so that's kind of an interesting kind of layout. This person also had some wall sections because they were doing it. This was an addition or something like that. So I have some wall sections, how this thing is being built. They're all done in SketchUp. And this is a link, and you're welcome to look at this link. It's, uh, Nick Saunders has some, some great ideas and has some really wonderful looking, very artistic working drawings for his projects. And he, he, shows, he tells you how he does them. Okay, so we're gonna be working on this and we're not gonna come to finish, but that's okay. That's, this is our goal. So we're gonna start with setting up our SketchUp model. So let's go ahead and open up our SketchUp model. One of the first things I want you to make sure you do is to check your scene tab and make sure that all these items are, are checked off. And so we're going to make a plan view first. We're going to work on a plan. That's where we're going to spend a lot of time doing that. And so we need to make a section cut. Hover over this and click. And if you put your cursor over, just hover over the top of the walls here, it'll be in the blue plane. If you put it at different angles, it'll be whatever angle that is. Blue is what we want. Click, and it'll, it'll say a section plane. Right now, whatever name it gives is fine. Type in M for move. I can move it, click, and move down in the blue. And I want to be basically above the countertop and seeing the window, but below the upper cabinets, and then click. So it looks something like that. Typically, you can imagine a cutting plane about four foot above the ground, and that would, that's where it will put us. Once you get it to this level, I just click away so you don't, it's not selected. Because you can have more than one section plane in a model. Then let's look straight down on this view, because we're going to look straight down. And you can see we still have perspective mode going on. We want to go to camera parallel projection. So then the next thing I want to do is I don't want that orange lines around there. So I'm going to make this not visible. This, this displays the planes. I don't want the planes. I want, it to, I want it to be cut. I just don't want it to display the planes. So you can see depending on which buttons of these I select will depend on what I see on, on my model. And if I have to remove, if I have to move this plane up or down or change it, I want to visible, I want to see it so I can do that. Next thing I want to work on is to get rid of this uh, green background. I would like to have it to be the white background. And I need to get rid of this texture, but this material here because I'm not going to want that. So let's go here and go to our styles. And in our styles, click on default styles if we need to. 
And the third one over is called construction document style. That gives us a white background. And it changes some of the settings of the line work and the line types. Additionally, I wanna take off this display section fill. Let's go ahead and take that off. Because if I don't see my fireplace, I can't see my fireplace if I, if I have it on. So I take it off so I can see my fireplace opening here. I don't want materials. Let's say I want, I could have it. I could have materials. It's, it's, some people do that. In my, in my own office, I typically have my materials visible. If for this project, we're not gonna have materials visible. So we'll click on hidden line view. So we now have just white and black line. So this, this is all has to be done to set up our model to get it ready to go to the layout program. Then last under tags, take off door. Right now we're seeing our cut through of the doors. So take off door and it opens it up. These doors that are arced like this is what we plan to see in plans. And that is under the CAD doors tag. And so when we had it before in 3D view, I had that tag not visible, so. So for scenes, make sure that all these are checked Make sure all these are checked for scenes and make a new scene. This is ready to be made a scene now. Save it as a new style if asked. Always, I always do that as a safety measure, make sure I don't ruin a style I already have. At the end, I would purge the model and so we would have uh, clean, clean it up. And I'm gonna call this scene, uh, I believe I called it floor plan. And I'm gonna to go to X-ray view. This is this button right here. And that's gonna show me what's happening underneath the countertops, which I'm gonna to wanna to have. I'm gonna have that information on my layout plan. Under scenes, make a new scene. Save as a new style. We'll call it under counter. This is a complete architectural PDF for this particular cabin um, plan view. This is the kind of notes we would have all over it. The model is like this. At this point, we're done with the SketchUp model. We've made it graphically look like this, and we're just gonna focus on just the kitchen area. So let's save the file. So let's open up Layout by clicking the icon on the desktop or going to the Start menu and typing Layout. The program should appear. Click on it to start. And I want you to open up at least once. We're just gonna look at it opened up once and we'll close right out right away. When we open it the first time, it actually creates new folders. So just click, click, a, click a document, it doesn't matter. So if I click on my folders here and scroll down to SketchUp under S and open up that subfolder, there'll be layout there. You can also type in here on the start menu, type in L-A-Y, and as you start pulling it out, eventually you'll get layout show up here and you can open it that way. Either way is fine. But we have to open it up at least once in our, in our computer so that files get set up. If you take a look at this, this is pretty similar to SketchUp, right? We've got a palette over here, different, different things you can open and close, uh, you know, with different options, of course, but we still have a very similar setup here. And up at the top, we've got icons, we can always arrange and rearrange them as we'd like, and it still works out just fine. For right now, I want you to go to exit out of layout. We're not gonna use this right now. I wanna, I wanna install something on your computers. And again, you only have to do this once. So down here in the search box, I'm gonna type in a, a, a something. And again, those of you who are using Macs, I, hopefully you know a way of finding things in your folders. But for the uh, IBM type computers, percent app data percent, and then click on this folder that shows up. But do you have a folder called SketchUp? Because that's what the important thing is. Do you have a folder called SketchUp? Double click to open that up. And you'll find your current version of SketchUp folder inside there. Double click to open that up should have a file folder called layout. That folder did not exist before. So double click there. And inside here, double click on the word scrapbooks. 
and it should be empty. Move it to the side. Then go to the layout you just copied, the layout folder for class. And inside this layout folder, there's something called My Scrapbooks. Double click on My Scrapbooks. And inside there should be one scrapbook called JAL. Now this is actually a layout file that's created with the, with the layout program. And the last letters is dot layout. So anything that's dot layout has a, is a layout file. And this particular one is called a scrapbook, which has a lot of symbols in it. You've been using probably AutoCAD and AutoCAD uses blocks. And hopefully you've learned about blocks. Revit uses families. SketchUp uses components. It's kind of all the same thing. This is a group of symbols that we're gonna be using in today's class. I would just click and copy that over to the scrapbooks folder in the layout folder in SketchUp folder on your computer. That way it's gonna be in that folder and it can be found real quickly. And so now that's in here, you can exit out of the app data one. You can close out the app data window. We're not gonna use that anymore. And then into your, my scrapbooks, go up a level, click this up arrow, or click this layout and go to my templates. And one was called KCC eight and a half by 11 dot layout. Double click that one to open it up. That's a template file I created for us to use here in, in, in our class. And I've got 11 by 17s and 18 by 24s. So all different sizes. All right. So it opens up, it should look something like this. We'll see the information on here. These are basically text boxes I created for you. And you notice down here, there's a funny one and you can scroll using the scroll wheel and get close to this bottom area. There's a weird one with some overlapping text. On the side here, look at layers. You open this up layers. We'll see that I have some layers that made up for you called TTB. These layers are what I call my title block layers. And this is some designation that can, it can be useful for your title block. And so one of them says title block sheet name one line. One says title box sheet name two lines. I made this so that if you have a long name for your for that sheet name, you can might need to put two little lines of text in it. And so this will do that for you. In other words, if you take off the one line, you can see there's only two lines of text now. If you make one line visible and two lines not visible, only one line of text here. Let's do that because the information we're gonna do next, type, type in here is only gonna be needed for one line of text. So now I can just double click on that sheet name here. When you double click into the text box, you may get an error message that the font is missing. The font used was Arial Narrow. You can just try and use regular Arial. Uh, also, we'll be using the ArchQuick Narrow font. If you did not install the ArchQuick Narrow font from the beginning of the first day of class we did together, you won't have that font in your machine. I would just use Arial. So for the sheet name, I'm, I'm gonna put type in here, floor plan and island elevations. This is like a text box in Word. You, know, you just type it in there. When I click away, it flips itself back up, up right. Down here at the bottom, drawn by, put in like your last name or your initials, your whole name if it fits there. Project number, every office does it differently. We're gonna call this 102-KCC. The date, we put in today's date. This one here, double click. It's gonna be I, capital I, 1.01L. And you click away, I mean the box goes away. I mean that little bounding box. There are some naming conventions for CAD standards. Uh, and so here's, here's uh, some designations that we would wanna put in here. So the first thing would be the letter and then a number. And the letter dis def defines the discipline. So A is for architectural work, C for civil and so forth. I is for interiors, all right? So this is an interiors project, uh, interior cabinetry and stuff could be an interiors project. Um, and in this case, we're saying it is, and so it's gonna be I. But you can see some of the typical letter designations given, given out. Over here for the sheet type is the number that comes after that. And it depends on what the number starts from. So 1.01 to 1.99 are all plans, either floor plans, ceiling plans, framing plans, whatever. Uh, anything that starts with a two are elevations. Starting with three are sections, you know, 
large scale plans and elevations that are not detailed start with four and so forth and so on. So all these uh, general notes and stuff will have a zero start. Mm -hmm. So if I look at a number, like I say, hey, look what's on sheet A 1.02. Well, that should tell you that it's an architectural floor plan because it's an A. And that's the second floor, but it's zero two, uh, but it's a floor plan because it's a one, right? A is for architectural, one's for floor plan, zero two is the second of them, probably the second floor. It's probably sheet number two of that whole thing, right? If I say A 4.01, oh, it's probably an architectural um, and it is a four, so it's a large scale plan or an interior elevation or something, right? Four would be interior elevations. Uh, it's the first sheet of the interior elevation sheets and so forth and so on. So just kind of shows you how that numbering tells you what it is. So because it's 1.01, it's our first floor plan sheet. It's an interior floor plan. While changing some of this text, your text box might show up with a little red arrow and perhaps the numbers not quite fitting in. If that is the case, it basically means that your, your font substitution is wider than the available space in the text box. For the sake of this lecture, you could just type in I1 so that it fits. This over here, instead of 0, 1, we're going to actually have three sheets where we're done, hopefully. Right? And then at the top for project name and address, uh, we're going to call it cabin kitchen, cabin kitchen. Um, and then also for project address, uh, I'm just going to type in 102 Jones, Cedar Rapids. Oops, there's still the right here, Rapids. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a file save as and save it um, in your folder that you save your files and it's wherever, wherever you save your homework assignments. Now we could have had some of the text come in automatically. If you go to file, document setup and go up to auto text up here, there's some tags here that could be automatically put in instead of the date and all that kind of stuff. So for example, I could have uh, an address tag that could change automatically. The author, whoever, whoever did the drawing, current date. Uh, I want to like a lot is date modified because that means every time I open the drawing and change the drawing, the date automatically updated, uh, which is kind of good because a lot of times you're working on a project more one day. Down at the bottom, we've got page name and page number. Those are great to have as well. So those are very good ones. For date modified, I mean, this is the default, but we can change the formatting to be like 12, 1, 20 or something like that. So uh, I, would, I would type in those two little brackets and then the words inside there, just how they show here. Date modified with a big D and big M. And then when, when you type it in there and you click away, the text box changes to be whatever date it is. That's kind of handy. We're not going to do that right now in this one. We're just going to leave this like this um, and keep going with the lecture. But I just want you to be aware of that. In my office work, I do have that date modified. I do have some of these other ones, um, the page number and so forth. Over here on the side for layers, let's have, hit the plus sign, make a new layer. And let's call it graph uh, viewport. Let's call it viewport. If you double click inside there and type in viewport and then click away and it should stick. Notice we got a little pencil next to it. That little pencil symbol means it's the active layer, the current layer that's being worked on that, that, that we have. It automatically defaulted to that. And then I want the order of these views to be what I want visible over what I don't want visible. So viewport should come up to the top. So click and drag to bring it to the top. Now we're going to go to file, insert, and go find where you have your um, cabin, the, that cabin file that we just made. By the way, if you don't see this picture on the side of your insert, it's, it's, this, it's this little button here and, and that gives you a kind of pretty view of what you see there. Click on open. It'll come in looking something like this. 
So viewport's active. So this is on the viewport layer. A SketchUp model can be inserted into layout in various graphic representations. One of them is a raster. We talked about raster images, right? When you zoom up to raster image, it becomes pixelated. This is one of the fastest ways to bring in a SketchUp model into layout. Vector takes a little bit more processing power, but not much. But what you do lose is you lose all the, all the textures that you have. So example, it turned into just this standard color. So this, this image showing these kind of wood tones became this. But it's a vector. So when you zoom up, zoom up, zoom up, it's sharp, crisp lines. And then this one down here is hybrid, where you're showing both. So this would be the most intensive processor. It's really going to take up a lot of energy. It's going to take a long time to reload, regenerate, and so forth. So uh, typically, this is good enough for what we're doing, for printing and so forth. But uh, sometimes you might need to have that precision, especially with zoom up. If you click on SketchUp model, it should say the scene is under counter. That's our last scene that we had working on it. It would say raster. These are where you change the settings. Raster is good. Um, this should all stay that same way here. Down at the bottom, you may or may not have background checked off. I tend to like it not be checked for background. If you have background tab check, it would be all white. And in this case, it doesn't matter. If you want to keep it white, that's fine with me. I, in my, my work, I like to have it be kind of see-through-ish like this. And then I'm going to change the scale here. So right now, I'm seeing the whole image. I'm going to change the scale here to half inch equals a foot. You might have to scroll up or down to get to that. Half inch equals a foot. That's half inch equals a foot. It's going to look like this all of a sudden. Right? Once you pick that scale, this should be locked on preserve scale on resize. Because as I make this bounding box bigger or smaller, I don't want to change the scale. If I don't have that checked, the image will scale and it will uh, scale again. So, so now you have these grips here, and it's like grips in the graphics in Word. Just kind of grab the grips, and you want to kind of drag it open. I'm going to have to open this way. I want to see that L shape of the cabinet. Um, and then click and drag over here. So I'm just clicking and dragging. Something like this. When I click away from the image, I don't get the box anymore. When I click on the image, I do. Also, you notice when I click on the image, you get the up and down arrow for move. So I can move in position. If I click and drag, I'm moving it. So when I click and drag, you can see you can move it. Then on top of that, I've got a crosshairs and a line, a little circle. If I put my, my cursor on over that circle, I get this rotate symbol, like again, like SketchUp. Click and drag upwards, and I'm going to type it to 90, or I can just type in 90. Let go of my, and type in 90, press enter, and it'll straighten it up like that. Now, I'm only doing this because I think it fits better on the page, this orientation. Click away. That looks pretty good. And now I'm going to go to my viewport layer, and I'm going to lock it. We're going to be drawing on this viewport layer. We're going to be changing things and so forth. And I don't want to move or erase this piece. It's like the the components in SketchUp, when we lock them in place so we don't move them, same idea. I'm going to lock this. So now this viewport's locked. I can't put my pencil here until I unlock it. I can't make it the active layer again until I unlock it. And you can unlock it, move it, position again, too. The next thing I want to do, this is my own personal preference. Under Arrange, under Arrange, we've got some options here. So click under Arrange tab. Right now, we have Object Snap turned on and Grid Snap turned on which means anything I do will snap to the grid as well as to the object if there's an object is snapped. I don't want to put the grid snap on. I want it off, okay? So all I'll do is put my cursor down here and click on grid snap on, and now it's off. You're going to say, how do I know that? Well, if you click on arrange again, it'll show like that. I do want object snap on. So if you click on arrange now and it says grid snap off, don't click on that down there below anymore. We're, we're done. It's, it's, it, the snapping is off. I do want to snap to the object. I don't want to snap to the grid. So now we'll make a new layer. Click on the plus over here and we'll call it graphics. And click away and it looks good. And I want the graphics to be above my viewport. It's important these layers because they create what's visible. It's like pieces of paper on top of each other. So you want certain papers on, you want certain things visible over other things. And I want my graphics to be visible.
And then what I want to do is you can see that you might, you might want to zoom up by using the scroll wheel. You might want to zoom up to the, to the drawing here. We, we, we're showing what's happening underneath the countertops. So I'm seeing the base cabinet and all this. That's great. See the dishwasher over here. That's fine. The problem is I'm also seeing the kick play, the toe kick. I don't want to see the toe kick. And I'm also seeing some other things I just don't want to see. Uh, the handles of the doorknobs. If I was drawing this with a pencil and paper, or if I was looking at a CAD drawing, I typically would, would not see that in the two-dimensional work. It's just too much detail on there. I do want it in my SketchUp model. I don't want to see it here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace over them with the, with the rectangle and the line tool. And so I'll have them the way I want them to look like, and I can snap to them so they'll be the right side. So here's the rectangle tool. Click on that. And now before I draw anything, I need to set up what this rectangle is going to look like. So I've got to go to the shape style. We don't want fill, so make sure fill is not selected. We, we're not going to want fill in here. Fill means coloring in the inside of the shape. Uh, we don't have a pattern, so don't worry about that. Stroke here, yeah, we need to have a stroke. It's got to be a line. we got to see a line. Uh, 0.5 is fine. 1x is fine. Uh, the color of the line is black. If we click on this, if we click on this box, we get to this, this thing, we can change the color of the line to be something other than black, right? Here, though, I'm going to change it to this first one, the hidden line, because it's going to be hidden. The countertop is solid line. Underneath, it's going to be hidden line. So I'm going to do, I'm going to click over here, like right here. Click. I'm going to go over here to the front face of my appliance. Click. And there it is. It should look something like this. So we have no fill, so you should be seeing the underneath area of the appliance and everything. So, so I'm going to click the line tool or type an L for line. Make sure the settings are the same, that fill is not selected and all that. And I'm just going to click on the outside edge of the cabinetry. I'm going to click here, click, click, click. Press escape or the space bar. And for over here, you know, type an L for line to get it back to line tool again. Click, click, click. Press the space bar, and, and that's that. So those are the those are the cabinet lines I drew, and they're dashed. Type an R for rectangle. So remember, the keyboard shortcuts still work, don't they? Those SketchUp shortcuts are still working by default, and we can build our own as well. I'm going to do a rectangle from here to here, right? Another rectangle from here to here, another rectangle from here to here. So I made all these rectangles. Yeah, all those little rectangles. I could also do lines. I could do lines that go around the perimeter and stuff like that. I could do that too. That's fine. I just did rectangles. I thought it'd be fast to get them done. And I snap to the object. That's why I like that object snap a lot. I'm not going to snap to that grid. So the lecture talks about the importance of the layering. So in this example, graphics is over viewport, and I can see my rectangle. Here, I can't see my rectangle, even though I drew it. Because why? I drew it with graphics under viewport. You see the difference? You know, so it's there. It's just underneath the viewport, and the viewport's not letting me see what's underneath. You can also arrange within a layer by right-clicking on the line and then noting on the dialog box that comes up where it should be within the layer. So for example, within the graphics layer, I can arrange a certain line to be in front or behind other lines within that same layer. If you click on that in this rectangle here, uh, we have those dots like that. We have the scale. We can resize it if we did the wrong size um, dishwasher, grab the wrong thing, or we need to rotate it or something like that. I don't, you, the, the graphics all have that. You can always you go you can always change the graphics. There's always some sort of um, rotation symbol or things like that. Let's save this file. Save. We want to add some more lines. For example, there's a vault in here. There's upper cabinets. I like to record that somehow on this drawing. So I got to go back to my SketchUp model. From this point forward, we will not pan, move, zoom, anything. This stays fixed at this point. So make sure 
click on this under counter scene tab. All right, and make sure this is exactly how it is. And we're gonna make a new scene here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this section. And what's gonna happen is we'll see all the way through it. See, we still have x-ray on. So I'm gonna see all of my line work above. So here's the upper cabinets, as well as the vault, as well as the under cabinets too, because it's x-ray mode, right? Hit the plus sign here, make sure these are all clicked. They should be clicked. Hit the plus sign here. Save as a new style. Let's call that ceiling. Because I'm seeing the ceiling here. Again, the naming is how you want it named. I, I just think that makes sense for me to locate things to call it that. So if I click on under counter, the section's cut, floor plan, the section's cut with not being x-ray mode. Click on ceiling, we've got x-ray mode, we've got no section, and we're seeing the ceiling and the, and the upper cabinets. And we saved, save this file. Go back to layout. And now we've got to say, hey, the file's been updated. This has been changed. So go to file, document setup, references. And you should see these references in your document setup. The first one called the Kirkwood seal, I would unlink it because you don't have that seal. As a matter of fact, I don't even have it in the same spot anymore. So I would just unlink it and it becomes an embedded image, not a big deal. Cabin layout, we do want that linked, but it says it's out of date and it is, we've just saved it. So click on update. And at first you're not gonna notice anything different, but we now have another scene to work with and it's updated. If we go to SketchUp model, Instead of under counter, click this down triangle and select ceiling. It wouldn't be there before. If you've seen this before we updated it, it wouldn't have ceiling on here. So click on ceiling and we should have the ceiling here. And it should line up perfectly exactly here because we didn't pan or zoom it. And now we see that here, here's that ceiling right here. And so we're gonna work with that next. Line tool or type in L for line or click the, click the line tool. And then over here, we have our strokes by default, how they're gonna be. For a ceiling, you want that to be a center line. You, when you have those vaults like that, you're gonna want that to be a center line. If it was uh, like a tray ceiling, it could be stay hidden, but you want this to be uh, a center line. So click this down triangle here and go to this one. This is the center line, long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash. So that's what I want. And in this case, the spacing, the spacing um, I think is a little too long. That's personal preference, uh, but I think the, uh, the one, one by line spacing is just gets really long uh, lines. I'm gonna type 0.5 there. So I'm kind of showing you how to change certain parts of this. The width is fine. The stroke of, of 0.5 is fine. The width is fine. It's just the line length I'd like a little tighter. So, I'm gonna click here, click, go up here, click. And at first, nothing's gonna happen. If you zoom up a little bit, well, it's kind of hard to see. It's, it, it's there, the line's been drawn. It's just, it's, you can, if I scroll around, eventually I see like a little dashy line next to that solid line, and that's okay. I'm not gonna keep that there. I'm using these lines in the model as a guide for my tracing. I also wanna show these upper cabinets because not everywhere is gonna be an upper cabinet. I don't need to show the molding in the top. So I'm gonna go back and switch it back to a hidden line, a dashed line. And I'm going to go ahead and um, keep it as 0.5. So remember this, this lower line down here was at scale one. And that way we'll distinguish the upper dash lines from the under counter dash lines by having a different line length. Then I'm just gonna trace it using the, uh, the, the thing. I'm, I'm just gonna trace the perimeter. So I'm gonna click here here, here. Now at this point, I'm gonna kind of hover a little bit here and kind of try to line up a little bit with my, with the line below, click. So it's gonna be, that's gonna be a little bit of a guesstimate. Go down in the green here to this line here, click. Come out to this one.
press escape or the space bar when done. So this is what I traced here. So if you want to take a look and see that, that's what I traced. Now, if you wanted to trace the upper cabinets going back to the to the line back in here, or what, yeah, that's fine too. But this is this is what I traced for here. I'm just going to show an edge. I'm going to show interior elevations of this. They'll tell you all the size of the cabinets and all. And then we'll also trace this over here. When I'm done, hit the space bar or hit escape. Now this one, I made a little mistake. My mistake is right here. That should have been 90 degrees and it isn't because I snapped to the wrong thing by mistake. But that's okay, I'm gonna fix it next. My dash, my dash line, I snapped to the wrong thing. So I'm gonna double click. When you double click on a line, you get the endpoints of the line. So I got these little dots for the endpoints. I'm just gonna click and drag this one over here and done. See? because you have these little dots on the endpoints. So if ever, ever you have a line that's not quite right, you can click on the endpoints of that line and reposition. So that looks good. I, I don't wanna see the ceiling anymore. I just wanna see the floor plan now. So I'm gonna go to the viewport and unlock it, then go to the SketchUp model group and select this, the model itself, select that on the viewport. Instead of having a ceiling, I'm gonna click this down triangle and select floor plan. And look what happens. All my hidden lines are there. All my center lines are there in the right graphic that I choose as an office to present it. Now that we've got it in this view, I'm gonna go ahead and lock it back up again. I'm gonna save this. The lecture shows that we could possibly um, change these lines that we had before, make a layer called hidden, make that a hidden line type. And it looks like this. So and, and, and we never really played with this too much in SketchUp, but you can change those line types by just clicking on this and changing it. Um, so this is an alternate we, we could do. I, I don't prefer, I prefer doing it my way, drawing over it. And here's the difference. Here's, here's what it looks like when we trace them. Hmm? Here's what it looks like when we use the hidden style. We still get the still get the toe kick, we still get the doorknobs and all that kind of stuff. So it'd be even more visibility thinking to get it to look what I would expect it to look like. All right, so let's go make some, some layers here. So make a new layer, uh, let's, let's call this one um, uh, notes, let's say, uh, and then make another layer and call it dims. If you need to, just click and drag them to be in position. Typically, I like notes and dimensions to be above the graphics, above the viewports. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put some dimensions. That's important to have here. And again, these are the things, dimensions and notes you're going to want on layout. You don't want them on SketchUp. You want them on layout. It's up in here. So here's the, here's a, a, the for text, just like a little text box. This is the text box with the leader, and this is dimensions. So click on the dimensions. And that, that turns our cursor to a pencil with a little uh, dimension string stuck to it. We need to modify it to be how we want it to be. Uh, some defaults are good, but you know, uh, we want it to look a certain way. So on the side here, there's a grouping called dimension style. So click on that. So we, we click dimension first, click this dimension button first, then go over here, go to dimension style. All right, so this first button should be selected. This tells us how we want our number, above the line, centered, or below the line. Now, I've seen above the line and centered. I've never seen below the line, but there might be a case where that's the case. <clears throat> the next one, we want the third button pressed over, the align button. This says basically, how do you want that number shown? What orientation, squared, angled, whatever. I want it aligned with the angle. So if it's an angle dimension, I want the number to be at an angle. And then the last one, I'm just gonna click this, this first button feet and inches, because it's feet and inches. The other one's metric, met millimeters, uh, metric, it's feet and inches. This length, I want it to be architectural. The precision, uh, one eighth is good enough for our drawing purposes. I have drawn at one sixty fourths, and uh, sometimes that's, that's good, uh, but one eighth is what we're gonna use for this project. 
And this is basically how far these gaps and still forth are away from the image and things like that. Um, I'm leaving them for the defaults. They're, they're pretty good. So we've got dimension styles to be set. <clears throat> the other thing needs to be set is our text style. So click on text style and we want to scroll up. <clears throat> if you have arch quick narrow, let's use that because that's how I've gotten the thing set up. If not, just use Arial. And then I've, I've used a 12 point font. So arch quick, regular 12 point font. And then we need to also do shape style because dimensions have these little ticks at the end, one or the other. It defaults to arrows. And although some firms use arrows, we're going to use ticks in ours. So I'm going to change that to this angle tick here. And that's the, that's this one here um, with the angle facing like the one underneath the question mark on the keyboard. The same thing for the other side. And then the ticks are going to be one. This, this tells us how big those ticks are going to be. One uh, and 0.5 could be that. By the way, I've, I also seen people use dimensions and notes on a different color, like a red. They stand right out. They stand out different than the drawing. So we've got font, arch quick, narrow, regular, 12 point. We've got dimension style, above the line, angle of the line, feet and inches, architectural, 1 8. Shape style, stroke. 0.5, pitch is one, 2.2 2 point for start arrow and arrow and having the ticks. I also want to change auto scale to be half inch equals a foot. I, I don't want to use auto scale. I found that that is problematic because after the first or second dimension, it switches to scale of one to one. That means we just be focused. We have to be focused on making sure that the scale drawing is the scale of the image and the scale of the dimensions. We want to tell the cabinet run. So from here, from this edge here, that's the edge of the wall, to this edge here where the stove is, is where I want to go. So I'm going to click, move my mouse to here, click, and move away down here, like about here. Not too far down, click. So it takes three clicks for the first one. Now for the second, third, and fourth, just click. So double click here, double click here, and then double click at the end of the cabinet run, and then double click at the countertop. The, of the countertop. So once you put the first string in, you have to be click, 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 three clicks to get the first one, then double click the second, double click, double click, and it keeps going on that same line. If by mistake when dimensioning, one of your dimensions get off, the dimension got slipped, it didn't quite fall right or it didn't snap to the right thing, if you click on the dimension, you can click on the endpoints of this and kind of drag them to be the right size, right location. So you can adjust them after you put them in. Just as you can change the location of the extension lines, you can also move the text around by clicking and dragging on the text. Just double click on it and then click and drag the text box and let go. And this one here, this number is below the line. That is not an appropriate location for a dimension. It should be above the line always, either above the line or to the left of the line if it's a vertical one, right? So I'm gonna click, double click, and I'm gonna click and drag this up and then let go. We're not going to do all the dimensions on this thing. I'm just going to do a few. Let's do it again. Click on the dimension. Now it's going to do the last, click on the dimension symbol up here. It's going to do the last setting. So we don't have to, once we set it, we should be good um, for dimensions. I'm going to do this vertical one. I'm going to click here, click. Then we're going to click the edge of the cabinet right here. Click and move away. Click. And then double click on the countertop. It threw it on the wrong side. This is not where I want it to be. So I'm gonna click and drag it up and let go, done, right? Dimensions are going to be to the left of the line or above the line always. So we have two sets of dimensions. That's all we're gonna mention for right now. So I'm gonna make the notes layer active and current. And for the next information I'm going to put on the drawings, I will use my scrapbook. There's a scrapbook right here. Open that up. When you open up your scrapbooks, does it look something like this? Notice that it says arrows, curved, whatever, and then there's a little arrow over here, there's a little arrow over here. If you click on that, you get other arrows. See that? If I click and drag these arrows into my project here, I'll have that arrow in my project. Click on this little down triangle, and you'll see we've got cars, colors, people, signs, blah, 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 blah. We've got all these different things here that are come, come with it. And towards the bottom, there should be one that says J-A-L. That's the one I gave you. Click on J-A-L. 
when the first page looks something like this. If you take a look, look at that. There is a lot of pages here, right? We have several different arrows, but I've got plan one, site plan notes, dimension guide, elevation one, two, whole bunch. They're all basically blocks. Think about AutoCAD, how AutoCAD has blocks or components. Think of the 3D warehouse components. These are all set, ready to go to be used. On the first one, reference one, there's a north arrow. Click and drag and let go and it, it pops right in there. Right. Since we rotated the plan and we brought it into layout, we're also gonna to need to rotate the north arrow. North is towards the left. If you click on it, you see that same bounding box and you see the same move symbol and you see the same turn symbol, right? It's a little rotate symbol here and everything. But let's put it first to the side here a little bit. That's the first thing I wanna do. And I'm not gonna use this rotate. I'm not gonna use this rotate because if I do this rotate, I rotate the words too. I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna double click once. And by double clicking once, I've gone inside that. Just like going inside a component, the world turns grayed out, this world turned grayed out. And if I click on the circle, I now have another turning symbol. And this I'll rotate 90 degrees and then click away and click away. I like the word north to stay rectilinear to the page. It's supposed to be that way. If I was drawing this by hand, that's how I would do it. Click the down triangle or the little pages to get to the next page. This next page references two. I have this one, this, this, this piece here. If I click and drag and drop it over here. I can double click on the word drawing and I can change it to floor plan, right? I can change the scale to half inch equals a foot. So all these parts of the scrapbook can then be brought into the drawing and adjusted as necessary for the specific drawing information you need. Again, we're not gonna do the whole, the whole drawing set, we're just gonna do bits and pieces of it. Let's zoom up on the top here. Let's, let's kind of talk a little bit about writing notes ourselves. So this, we still have the notes layers as, as active. So I'm gonna use this label tool and I'm gonna make sure when I click on this label tool, I wanna double check some things. Under the textile, I want it to be arch quick, arch quick narrow, regular and 12 point. This will make sure that the text height on the dimensions and on my leaders uh, are all matching. So I click on, I click on this lab label here, because of this label, arch quick narrow, regular 12 point. Click on shape style. And uh, my stroke uh, 0.25 for the thickness 0.5 for the, you know, there's, there's, there's no dashes, we saw a line, so no dashes. The start arrow, two point is fine. The end arrow, let's change that to straight. I don't want a dot at the end of my arrow. So now we click on that. And I'm gonna right here and say like uh, upper cabinets or something. I'm gonna click and drag and let go. And click again and type in upper cabinets. Oops, make sure it's all caps. Click away. So I click, drag, click, and then click again and start, start writing it. If I click and drag, I'm going to get a curved line. And then I can use the select tool and I can, I can, I can grab these grips and change my arc how I want it to be, how, you know, how I want that arc to look. I tend to like smooth, simple arcs, but you know, some firms like to look ex exotic. When you double click on it, you can also reposition where the arrow is. Maybe you want to point there, you want to point over here exactly or whatever, you know, if you didn't do it right or if you change your mind as you work on the project. All right, let's do a different way. So click on this label tool again. All the settings should still be the same. In this case, I'm going to click here. I'm going to type in this as a knee wall. Click, move, no, cl no dragging, just move, click, move, click, and then I'm going to type in knee wall. So if I do click and drag, I get a curved line. If I do click, move, click, I get a, uh, a straight edge line. So depending which way you want it to, 
you can you can change that. At this point, the, the lecture says to continue adding elements. We're not going to add elements. <clears throat> the words refrigerator, dishwasher, and stuff are words that we can just drag over. Dimensions, you know how to do dimensions now. You know how the hidden lines came up and so forth. So let me show you where the words are. It's in scrapbook under, under plan two. So if you look at plan two, you know, there it is. <clears throat> I can just use the word, see the word refrigerator, click and drag it over here, let go. There it is. Uh, sink with disposal, click and drag over here, let go. There it is. So that's a quick way. So if you have these scrapbooks, you can really note up a drawing quite a bit. And on top of that, it'll remind you, oh yes, that's right. Uh, I need to put a mirror over this wall or something because I have the mirror symbol there or whatever. And of course, all of these are just text, so I can just double click and change them, all right? They're just simple, like little blocks you can drag in. So let's save this, file save. So now we have to go back to our model. I want some material elevation views. So we saved the layout file, and now we're going into SketchUp, the inside. So I'm gonna click on floor plan, click on the floor plan, because I need to get underneath the ceiling <laughs> to, to get this to work. Now, there's different ways we can do this. One way is to create a section plane, just like we did before, it's just sideways and move it in. And you can do that. But I like this other technique. We use this in the hotel, and I think it looks it works pretty well. It's using the position camera tool. So click on the position camera tool. I'm gonna get right there, click and drag up and let go. It should look like that. So I'm looking at this, but the top's been cut off. We have the section plane still going on here, right? So now I will go up here to this view and take off the section plane. So it's looking something like this. At this point, I'm not gonna use them extents, but instead zoom and pan to position the view and get it into the screen better. And I don't wanna use orbit, okay? I just wanna use the zoom. In this case, I do want my colors to be visible because we did, remember we colored the walls. So we've got the wall coloring on there. So I'm gonna click on the wall colors and I see my cabinet colors and my wall colors all come in nicely. My cabinets look odd, don't worry about it. We'll take care of that in a little next step. This is really what it looks like, by the way. If you look in the model and look behind the cabinets I gave you, they're, they're like, there's holes, there's nothing back there. There's no cabinet behind there because I didn't need it for models. I want to make my own a light. And so this is how I did that. We're also seeing in here the door beyond. This is the this is the sliding glass door through the bedroom door. So it's several layers deep. We're like we're looking eternally back out that way. Let's make a scene. Hit the plus sandal for scene. Because this looks right right now. Save as a new style. Again, that's a, I like to do that. It's a safety thing. We'll purge at the end and get rid of th scenes and styles we're not using. But right now that's what I want. And I call the kitchen uh, elevation, kitchen elevation one. Now, if we make a mistake in orbit, oh, no, nah, I can just click on here and come back to it the way it was, okay? So the problem with this is that we're seeing too much. When people look at this on a 2D drawing, it's gonna be very confusing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add something called fog. If you don't see fog over here, go to window, default tray and make sure fog is selected. All right. So one of the first things I do is click on display fog because that's typically off and typically we don't want it. And all of a sudden you see something happen. It's going to look a little different. That, that sliding glass door doesn't look quite as strong. And I've used that like this a little bit so that we still have that view, but we don't, it doesn't become totally gone. In this sense, it makes it a lot better if it's just not there altogether. So was, um, let's say you have an angled wall or something, you have, or you have an L-shaped room and one wall is further back from the other. I, I've used this fog to, to, to denote that that wall steps further back, but you still see the, the wall. In this case, I don't want to think I want to see that. This is another room altogether. That's a bedroom on this one, and we don't need that. So I'm going to, on this back one here, this is 100%. I'm going to click and move it forward towards the front until there's nothing there. I don't want to see anything at all in that opening, in this opening here. I don't want to see anything at all in this opening. Now, by doing that, by bringing it forward, I now have the front pieces looking a little ghosty like, right? I mean, look at, look at how light this looks here. I don't want that at all. So I'm gonna take the front, the front number and move it back until it becomes solid. And I want this to be as solid as possible. Could be something like that. Right, that looks pretty solid. And yet I don't see the door beyond. 
I'm going to right click over here and update the scene. So what did we do with that? Well, let's take a look here a sec. So <clears throat> the two parts of fog, this back one says that after this plane, you will see zero of the model. It's nothing is visible past this plane. And the front one is saying everything before this plane is 100% visible, crystal clear. And between these two, that's where things be start to become fuzzy. It goes from solid to very fuzzy, very fuzzy. To... So all I did is I moved this forward, moved it on the back so that what we're seeing is just the front. Now, I could also have created a rectangle and drawn it and put it in position like this, see, like that, and made it white so it looks white. And when you look at it, it looks just like what we did. I just prefer using the hog. I don't, I don't need any extra geometry in my model to be taken care of. Fog is just a style setting. When I don't want it, it won't be there. Notice that we might have some funny things in our model, like look at the wall and yours, the wall might be funny, weird looking. Um, maybe uh, mine has that cabinet open, yours may or may not have a cabinet open. So some weird things here. When we put it in layout, we'll clean it up. Let's go ahead and save this. And then switch back to uh, layout. Now, whenever we save our SketchUp model, we've got to do an update for this one as well. If you go File, Document Setup, it should say under References, you say our floor plan's out of date. And it is, we just saved it just now. So click on that and click on Update. We now have that new scene tab. So now I'm going to add a page to this. I can go to the pages setting here and hit the plus sign or up here in the toolbar, I can hit the plus sign here. Either way, I'm going to add a page. And it's going to look like this. On page two, some words came over, some did not. If we go back to page one, you can click on page one, either click it here to go back to page one or these buttons. This is next, previous. We see that we've got these title blocks and some of the title block says every page and it even has a symbol. See the symbol here? Because here it says only on this page, only on this page, only on this page. Here it says on multiple pages. If you click on this, you can change it to multiple pages or not. The items that were copied onto the second page we created automatically were items on that every page layer. That's the ones that traveled over. We can tell the difference too because the word floor plan here, if you click on this, there's a blue box. Click on your name, it's a blue box. Click on the word cabin kitchen, it's a red box. Red box is a visual clue that, hey, this is an every page item. Clicking on page two, we realize that we need to copy that text from the first page and get over here. So let's go click back to page one. Click on the word floor plan, this, this area here. Hold the control key, click on your name, the date, and the sheet or name. So there's four items that did not transfer over. And then go to edit copy. Click on the next page and then do edit paste. And they should all come right back in. Add another page, hit, hit the plus here. Here's add a new page, hit the plus, and then go edit paste again. By the way, if I click this middle one, I would have copied that page with the text on there and everything. So that's another way of doing it too, uh, if you have it set up. Okay, so now we've got our three pages. You see page one, page two, page three here. So page three is my current page right now. I'm gonna change that to be what it needs to be uh, on that page. And I'm gonna write here, perspective and schedule. So this perspective and schedule changes here. And this down here is now I 7.01. And that's again, because it's a perspective and a schedule sheet. So I put it on seven. <clears throat> if we go to page two, this will be I 4.01. Cause this is the interior elevation. I'm gonna write in here and type in interior elevations. I'm going to make my viewport layer unlocked and I'm going to make it active. I want to be the active layer. I'm going to go File, Insert. 
and go ahead and give out the, the name and click on open. And it might open up right to this, this view, which is great. That's our last view we saved. Now, if not, if it doesn't open up to that last view, if you go to the SketchUp model here, just make sure Kitchen Elevation 1 is the scene that's coming in. The scale is going to be half inch equals a foot. And that'll lock it on resize. And now I'm going to make my size, clicking the end, you know, the, the sides about halfway through the door, we're going to cut through, let's say, and a little bit more of the wall, something something like that, right? About that much visibility. And I'm gonna drag it, click and drag it down. Okay, I'm gonna click away. I'm done moving and positioning it. This is also half inch goes a foot. A lot of times interior elevations are a little larger than floor plans, let's say. Um, and it could be, they could be even larger depending on the detail. You could have a pretty good size um, one inch goes a foot depending on how much detail is going on. But here's what I'm talking about, right? We have, we have this funky thing going on in the kitchen here. I got to show the cross side view and things like that. It's not, not quite what I'm looking for. If you take a look on the drawings that we've been following along. This is what it looks like. So I kind of want to make it match that kind of a look, right? I don't want to see all this other extra stuff that is coming in here that I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to have. So click on the line tool. In this line, I'm going to set it up to go. I want this to be a thicker kind of line eventually. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my shape style. Make sure to take the fill off. For the stroke, black is fine, but I want it to be thicker. So I'm going to type in two. I want to have some thickness to it. The dashes, we don't want dashes. We want a solid line. So at this point, whether it's 0.5 or what, it doesn't really matter because it's a solid line. So two is really the important part. And this is solid line. And then the rest can be whatever it is because it doesn't matter. There's no arrows on this or this. I'm going to start like here somewhere with my, my, my line tool. Click. I'm going to go across to here click and we'll go down to here click and over across to here and this one you have to kind of be kind of eyeball a little bit if at this point you see a white shape appear as you trace the model it means that the shape style settings have reverted to the default and the fill is on just go to the fill setting and turn it off and continue tracing And over across to here, in this one, you have to kind of be kind of eyeball a little bit, click, eyeball here a little bit, click, 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 straight down, click, over, click, and straight down to here, around the perimeter of the countertop and the cabinet, the toe kick. And then at this point, when I see that line kind of show up here, I'm going to go straight up and close it off. So that is the line. So it should look something like this. When you click on it, you should get that bluing of the line and then go to edit copy. Then I want you to hold the control key down and select the background. So now we've got the line and the viewport. So I'm going to right click and select create clipping mask. And when we do that, the background all goes away. And all I have is this view like that. Then go to edit paste and the shape we copied comes back. And it's exactly where the other line was. So when you do clipping mask, that line disappears, right? The line we drew disappears. So by copying it first, so there's actually two lines really, one we're seeing, one we're not seeing. One other thing to do, uh, we don't want this edge to be here. We needed it. We need to have an enclosed shape to create clipping masks. But if we were drawing by hand, we would not have a line there. There's no edge there. This tool is called the split tool. So let's take a look. This one, this was the race tool, the pick up the style tool, split tool, and join tool. Join tool is like the weld tool in SketchUp where you can put lines together, become one line. Split basically splits it apart. I'm going to click on the split tool. 
and you see my cursor becomes this little knife edge kind of deal. I'm gonna click on this corner right here. When you get close to it, it says on point, click. Okay. And then down here, click. So basically I've used a split tool on both ends, here and here. Then I can use my eraser tool and erase it, or I can use select delete. Let's go save this, file save. If we were going to do dimensions on here, we would notice one thing. It's hard to snap to where you want to snap to because with that crown molding. And we're not, we typically don't dimension cabinetry to a crown molding. We dimension to the actual cabinet box. So what we would do is we would create a new tag called trim and put all of our crown molding on the trim tag. Then we would make a scene with the trim tag visible and a new scene where the trim tag is not visible. After these changes, we would save the SketchUp model. Switch back to layout and update the model. We would now have the possibility of switching between having the trim visible or not, which would make the mentioning to the exact line easier. I, I tend not to use auto scale anymore. I just tend to type in the scale I want, I select it which means you do have to be careful because many times you do things a like quarter inch, half inch, eighth inch or whatever. Uh, and so you wanna make sure you have the right scale, otherwise the text won't be right. But this is what happens with auto scale. Every now and then it just switches on me. And no, this is yes, if I took a scale to the actual piece of paper, it'll be half inch long, but the object that I'm scaling, uh, the scale factor I'm using is supposed to be two feet. No, I'm just telling you that happens. And we would bring in the notes and the dimensions here We'd go back to the and put our, our, our notes. And these would be the, the colors of the walls, the colors of the knobs we use, the formica information. We'd put that information down here. Uh, and then we'd put in the interior elevation symbol from here. We'd bring, bring him over from that scrapbook. And then we would take off what we don't need. We, we would take off the fill in certain areas that we aren't using. We'd put the right numbers here for the right views we're looking at. So let's save this file, file save. All right, let's go back to our SketchUp model here. We wanna show the client a perspective view of the interior. And let's go to, let's go to camera perspective and then uh, do, some, do some, some extents, take off the fog because the fogs will make it look like there's nothing. If you put a fog on, you won't see it, but I want a perspective view of the inside. A lot of times you're gonna have a cabinetry and perspective view. So we wanna have that so the client sees that. Go to your tags, make ceiling not visible. I want to be able to get in here. And put this little person again, this person position camera, because the perspective, we'll get a perspective view. So click on here. And I'm going to click on this corner back in here, click on this corner and drag it diagonally to this view and let go. It should look something like this. You might need to pan up or pan down a little bit, maybe. You may not, I, I had to. And I'm going to do something like this. You want, you want about this much and then make the ceiling tag visible again. And put the doors back on so we have doors. So go to scene manager here and add a scene. I'm gonna call it perspective. And we'll save this model. We'll be back in the layout. And what are we gonna do in layout? We're gonna update the document. File, document setup, references, update. Click on the next button here. So this is now our perspective page. Let's go to file, insert, go back to our cabin. And this one's gonna look something like this. And I got quite a bit of outside space. I wanna make this image even a little bit larger. Yours might not have this problem. Notice as I resize the bounding box, the whole image resizes proportionally. So if I went down smaller, it keeps the same kind of area around the piece and everything, the same perspective proportions. But I, I want this large. I want this a little larger so I have a little bit more cabinetry I'm looking at. And then I can crop some of that outside area away. And then once I have it to the size of the cabinetry I want, because I'm looking at this view here, I'm not looking at the wall over here. I'm not going to keep this area on the sides. I just want this area here to be big enough to, to make it interesting. I will go back to this under SketchUp model. Oh, I'm going to click on preserve scale on resize. I'm going to preserve scale for SketchUp model. I'm going to preserve scale on resize. 
Now, when I move my grips in, the model will not resize. The image portion will stay the same size. And I can crop closer to the areas I want. And then I can click and drag this and position it how I want on the page. One other thing, when I click on it, it's in the viewport layer, so this is good. If it wasn't a viewport layer, I could right click, move to layer and change the layer it's on. So I was in the viewport layer when I did this, so that's perfect. I can also move by the arrow keyboards too. Sometimes I use those because I, I kind of like the way they, you know, they can be more exact if I want to. Let's go ahead and lock it. I, I always like to lock my viewports. The next thing I want to do is bring in the schedules. I got some schedules I can bring in. So I just want to double check our text style because it's words, right? Make sure that arch quick narrow is set and regular and right now 12 point. We might make it smaller, but right now let's do 12 point. And we're gonna to go to File, Insert, but this time go to where you saved your schedule. Click Open, probably Sheep 1. It's gonna look something like this. It looks like the, it, it copied over the text sizes are not right. While the table is still selected, let's click on the fonts. Make it arch quick narrow, right? And make it 12 point. So that, see it changed the font that came in at. And I'm gonna squish this up a little bit because it's, it's not gonna fit on the page, right? If you double click, you can kind of resize some of these boxes here. Now, some of these, I'm gonna take a look here. Some of these, I might need to make the, the box taller. The red arrow denotes that we're not seeing all the text that's in the box. So once I have all those little red arrows gone, this table is showing me everything that's on the text. So those little red arrows going down when I resized it, basically said that there was a problem with it. Click out of it, and then I can click again into it and kind of move it in position. Now, if this didn't fill the paper, I might have to put it on a different sheet rotate it. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to get it in, or maybe I need a bigger piece of paper, or I can make a smaller font. Yours just fills out, of course. Now, if I want to, I can go back to the Excel sheet and modify some text there. And then when I document update that I can get the new stuff here as well. So if you go file document setup, you can see Excel is, is one of the options that we brought in. So we can go to the original Excel sheet, modify it, change it, whatever, and then come back and just relink it and it should change here. So the next thing I want to do is put a title to this chart. So I'm going to click on the text box. And again, let's do the settings. Now that I've clicked on the text box and activated that particular piece, let's look at the settings. I'm going to use for font, I'm going to use Arch Quick Narrow. Again, you might want to use Arial if you don't have Arch Quick Narrow. And I'm going to use, instead, I'm going to use 18 point font now. So this text box will be the title of my schedule. Then for shape style, I do want a stroke. That'll give me a box around the words. If I didn't put stroke, it would just be the words. It would be basically a text box without a box around the text, right? I like to beef this up just a little bit, 1.5. Just give it a little bit more a heft for that title. And this is personal preference. It's not that it, you have to do this all the time. Then I'll start a text box here. And I would type in there appliance schedule, things I did. And then when I click away, it, it shows that little red arrows tells me that didn't fit. I'm just going to grab these middle grips and, and drag them out to this side over here and then click and drag to here and then click and move down. Notice it came to left justified here. I forgot to change this to a line center. And then also I like to do anchor center as well. So if I make this box much larger, the words stay in the middle. 
Additionally, I can make a rectangle using just a regular rectangle tool with the same settings and no fill. Take that, make sure there's no fill there. A nice thick border on this box. I could also select this, a window select like this, right? And I can right click and make group. And now I can move this as a group, right? So I got the border is a rectangle, the Excel file, and the title is grouped, just one thing. If you take a look at that north arrow here, same thing. There's all these little pieces. The lines are separate, the circle's separate, the little arrow's separate, and it was all grouped together. And that's why when you click, double click, you go into it, you go into it, you go into it, until you finally get to the actual one element that creates it. Let's save this. And now let's print this as a PDF by using export feature. File, export, PDF. Exporting will create a high quality PDF. Save it where you save your other homework assignments and name it Cabin Kitchen. We want all our sheets to be printed. I want all three sheets that we've that worked on. I'll print a resolution high is good. JPEG is great uh, for the images. They want to see how, how exact you want. In my office, I typically move it to that level. I don't really need to have that. That tends to be kind of, it makes a big file, right? For what we're doing here, for what we're doing, that is going to be just fine. That middle, middle is just fine. And click on export. And it'll save it. On my computer, the file opens up in Adobe Acrobat. This is medium compression. That's pretty crisp. That's pretty nice for medium compression. In layout, we can actually do a view presentation. It's like a PowerPoint presentation. You can mark it up, you can make notes. What I love about it is that when, you're, when you exit out of view presentation, you can say, do you want to save the changes? You say yes. And it creates a separate layer that you can turn on and off with those notes, which is really convenient. If you talk to a client, you circle something, say, I can look at that, I don't like this, and move this over. At the end, you have a record of what was talked about on what time, on what day, and so forth. Inside the layout folder I gave you, there's a setup layout PDF. It shows different ways of customizing the program. Things you can do like how to create new keyboard shortcuts, how to create new toolbars up in the, in the, up at the top. We're not going to use that. We don't have enough time in this lecture to do it all. I just want you to know it exists. A complete PDF with all the notes can be found in your homework folder for your review. I have also another PDF that has more architectural looking, so you have exterior views. For more practice, you have a hotel file, and you've got a hotel PDF that knows what kind of words need to go on there. You can play around with this program some more on your own. I use the 11 by 17 sheet and be able to do this. I can fit a quarter inch to the foot of all these. There they are, ready to go. Just remember to take that grid snap off or you'll find yourself fighting for some reason. Some books recommended to you that you can take a look at that. I think this one's a very good middle, middle of the road one here. Pretty good. This taught you how to make up your own title block, for example, and how to make it look certain ways. How I made all my graphics. All my graphics I made using information from this book. Good books. Worth, worth looking into. This one here is pretty good. It's got ideas, but it goes into other places. It's, it's, it has more SketchUp stuff as well. Uh, this guy is all about organizing and setting things up and getting a template file used over and over. Uh, but this is the Nick Saunders. It's a little heavy on the landscape and how to get the landscaping to come into SketchUp and how to also to make it look right when you take it to layout. Hopefully this brief introduction to layout will help you see that it is an important feature of working with SketchUp. Thank you for your time.